back everybody. Today we're going to mow my yard with a John Deere 1025R tractor and we'll see how it does. As always, we're proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, a lifetime warranty. If you need to add some stability to your tractor, feeling a little tippy side to side, make sure you check out Bora. And if you found this video to be entertaining or educational, please do give us a thumbs up, subscribe to see more tractor videos, and if you want something for your tractor, or maybe even a used tractor yourself, we can ship it. Tractors and attachments we ship all over the country. Check out GoodWorksTractors.com. So for those of you with a keen eye, you'll notice that this is actually a different 1025R than the other unit we have with all the bells and whistles and decked out. So I bought this tractor to have just at the house. I've been mowing with a real mower, a fairway Toro real mower uh, that you would mow traditionally about three quarters of an inch. And I've just ran out of time. So I switched back over to a 1025R selling the real mower. We're gonna put a bagger on here in the fall too. You can see that time of year is coming. We're in mid September right now and the leaves are just starting to fall, but plenty of them still on the trees. A little bit about this tractor, nothing special. A pretty much a stock 1025R, you will see it has an aftermarket seat. That's driving me nuts because there's no armrests on there. So I'm probably gonna replace that seat at some point. The R4 tires, most common tire that's out there on compact tractors, you'll see how it does. A little bit of rain has already fallen. We're in a dry spell right now. It should be raining later, but you'll see that these tires are gonna do okay on the lawn. We've done tire comparisons. There's five different tread patterns you can get for the 1025R, so check out that link if you wanna see different tread patterns and the pros and cons of each. Heck, we've even run dual wheels on our 1025R, although you can't do so with the mower deck. As far as the mower deck options themselves, you can get either a 54 inch or a 60 inch on the 1025R and the 1023E. That also goes for the 2025R. Now, if you have a Kubota, like a BX series, or even some of the other competitors out there, the Coyotes, Mahindras, Masseys, you're pretty much gonna have the same standard options. I really do like the drive over mower deck that John Deere has to offer. I think that's going to make installation and removal a lot easier and a lot more frequent so that when you're using the front end loader, you will take the mower deck off. You don't wanna leave this on. It's likely to be damaged. Uh, either the gauge wheels may be hitting a stump or a pothole. You could damage the linkage underneath too. You don't wanna get into that. So the easier that a mower deck is to take on and off, the more likely it's gonna protect your machine. Really quick, a lot of you guys have these machines or something similar. For all the newbies out there, the guys just getting into the 1025R, please share your wisdom. If you've found certain things that work or don't work, whether that's adjustments, uh, gauge wheel settings, mower blades, how to take it on and off. I've covered a lot of those things myself, but it's always helpful to get a different perspective besides just me sharing the info. So read and post in that comment section down below. Okay, so not a complete checklist, but if I'm hopping on the tractor and gonna get to mowing, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make sure I have my mower deck height set in the right position. So I will use the rock shaft control to raise this all the way up. You'll notice your three point comes all the way up as well. The three point hitch and the mid mount mower are on the same hydraulic connection. So when you raise it up here, they're both gonna raise. At that point is when you can make your mower deck height adjustment, all right? If you try to do this in the down position, it's not gonna work. So raise that deck all the way up, and then you can turn this one way or another and adjust it. A really quick side note, if somebody knows the part numbers, leave that comment down below, but you can get an independent hydraulic deck lift or an electric deck lift system so that your mower deck will raise separately from the three-point hitch. That will be an optional upgrade. I'm then gonna take a look at the gauge wheels, all four of them on each corner there. They are not designed to ride on the ground. So if you're wearing out your gauge wheels very quickly, well, they're making contact with the ground and they're not supposed to. The intent for the gauge wheels is to hit the ground before your mower deck does. So if you have an uneven bumpy ground and there's gonna be some spots out there, you're gonna see how those gauge wheels make contact and prevent a complete scalp right down to the dirt with the mower blades. And depending on your lawn, you could mow in high or low range. I am gonna mow in high out here, but I'm not gonna be going full speed. I'm just going to be going a little bit faster than the low range would give me. If you have a lot of hills to deal with, I have found, at least on my front yard, the hills don't matter at all. But if you have some very significant hills or maybe very thick grass, very thick long grass, and maybe it's wet and going uphill, you may want to find yourself in low range anyways. I'm sure there's a lot of opinions out there. Some of you will say, why are you in a rush? Others will say, I want to get it done as fast as possible. I'll leave that up to you to decide. As far as starting the machine up, I want you to always reference your operator manual. The simple way to do it is make sure you're in park, make sure you're in neutral, make sure you are aware of your surroundings, front, back, side to side, all the safety stuff. Read your manual, read your manual, read your manual. So from the tractor off, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake anyways. Typically you're gonna be at about half to three quarters throttle right in there. It's not 
critical that you're at the exact right RPMs to start it up. But let the glow plugs run, fire it up, and then let it warm up if you need to. Put your throttle down to idle. You always want to start a PTO, whether it's the rear PTO or the mid PTO, at idle. Okay, so you're going to fire that up by pulling out or pushing a button, your yellow PTO knob or button. At that point, you want to rev up your engine. So get those RPMs going. You'll see your engine RPM needle keep swinging around. I know on ours, we have a PTO symbol that's actually on the RPM gauge. And so we want to have it rev up all the way so that needle is resting on that symbol. So when your engine RPMs are at that right level, it means that your mower blades are spinning at the right speed. And just to clarify, so there's no confusion, just because your engine RPMs are all the way up doesn't mean that's how fast you're traveling. That's controlled by your foot pedals with the hydrostatic transmission. A quick tip for you guys to prevent the mower deck from turning off when you go in reverse. Before you hit the reverse pedal with your mower deck on, you can either pull up a little bit further on your PTO knob or push the button in a little bit harder, reference your manual, Doing so before hitting the reverse pedal will keep your mower deck engaged and allow you to back up and trim around trees, bushes, or other landscaping. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get to mowing. Got to get a few things out of the yard here. Soccer balls, soccer nets, all that kind of stuff. So we are mowing with a 2013 or 2014, one of the earlier years, so it's seven or eight years old. Uh, it's got about 350 hours on it right around there. You can see some bumps and bruises, some rust where it's kind of rubbed along. Uh, gauge wheels, it, it, it shows some wear and tear. That's okay. We did have to add air to the front tire over there, so low tire pressure is one of the common culprits for an uneven mow. We did a whole video all about different reasons that could cause that kind of thing, so make sure you check it out. And the mower blades are also just what came on here. I haven't sharpened them. I haven't taken them off. They're not new. So they're just kind of, you know, partway through their life cycle probably. No big chips or anything in them, but we're going to see how they do. And let's take a look at the finished results. Oh, and uh, as I'm hopping on the tractor here, you do always want to wear your seatbelt if you can. I know it seems kind of ridiculous, but safety first. And keep that ROPS bar up if you do. Reference the manual, safety is a big deal, accidents happen in a heartbeat.
Hey, so if you're curious what this black hunk of steel is on the three-point hitch, well, it's called the Versa Bracket. It's a product that we sell. It's gonna have several different features to it. The base feature is gonna be a weight rack. So you can hang eight suitcase weights on here, whether those are 41 or 70 pounds, and give you some much needed ballast weight when you're using your front end loader. A few other features would be this chainsaw holder up top, a two inch receiver, and even a couple of chain hooks. So this product we're proud to say is made in America and you can even purchase this weight bracket with weights as a bundle package and we can ship it right to your house. If you just need the bracket, we can sell that to you as well. Make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com.
done with the front and the backyard. Mowed at not the highest setting, but right around that three to three and a half inch. I didn't measure it, but, but most of the lawn looks great. You know, with a rotary mower, the entire mower, all three blades are on the same level. So those bumps, you know, left to right, if it's high over here, but flat over here, since everything's on the same plane, it's gonna wanna cut shorter, even with those gauge wheels engaged. There's still gonna be some spots and you'll see it, kind of the arches or the circles that are a yellowish color where we got really close to the ground, especially over in the back corner of the lawn where it didn't have the best job getting leveled out before we planted grass. So if you're thinking about leveling a lawn, fall is the time of year to do that. A lot of guys will level with sand or, or dirt. There's some great videos out there on that topic with Ryan Nor Lawn Care and Connor Ward showing you how to do it. But this gives you a good look at the 1025R. It handles really well. This is a three quarter acre lot, so mowing about a half acre of lawn. If you're looking at something like an X7 series tractor, like I used to have an X739, which I absolutely love, but for nearly the same price, not quite the same nearly the same price you can get something like a 1025r that will be diesel that'll give you the ability to put a front end loader on put a three-point hitch on so if you have other projects and landscaping needs around your yard you can tackle that as well or if you want to outsource your services or maybe you have hunting property up north getting into something like a 1025r or a kubota bx just gives you more versatility for your money and i gotta say the lawn's not looking ideal we have some issues going on with fungus and just lack of maintenance this year. It was a busy year, so we'll do better next year. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your machine, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Hey, thanks again for taking the time to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.